If you're looking to improve or break a plateau in Apex, then you've come to the right video. Here I'm going to give you five major areas that will enhance your gameplay by figuring out why are you plateauing. The skills presented in this video are stacking, so as you move through the video they do get more complex and build off each other. Also note that this is just a quick overview of these skills. Each of these skills could deserve a whole YouTube channel. With that, let's get moving. The most fundamental thing you have to have in Apex is aim. Sorry guys, hate to break it to you, it's not movement. If you can't aim and can't hit anything, it doesn't matter how good your movement is, it doesn't matter how good you use your cover, if you can't hit someone, you're gonna die. Now I'm not saying you have to be an aiming god, I'm saying you have to understand your limitations. How do you find those? You pick your favorite gun in the range, you shoot at these, let's say these four different targets, and you find off where your damage drops off like an octane on a hot drop. Again, to keep this shorter, I'm not going into how to do these things, but things like recoil smoothing or recoil memorization or burst firing, uh, all are things that might help you surpass your current limitations. Then what do you do? Grab another gun, find out which ones are your top performers, and then now you have an idea about what should be a realistic damage output from different distances under ideal circumstances. All right, if you think you got your aim figured out and the limitations of your aim figured out, then we need to talk about cover and clutter. When we're talking about cover, the fundamental is make sure you're using it, right? But how do you use it effectively? Well, I gotta defer you to some of my other videos for now, just cause it is such a big topic. What I wanna focus on in this one, which I haven't talked about previously, is clutter. I see it way too often that people are giving up their cover because they have to shoot over a railing instead of doing something like this. So how do we train this? We go to the range and we practice cutting our targets in half and still trying to get those same damage counts that we did before. Because remember, this is still static shooting, nobody's shooting back at us, so realistically our aim should be pretty close to the same at this point. So up to this point, we've had zero pressure and being able to aim both in the open and using cover and clutter. The purpose of the peaking section here is to get us away from wanting all these big one clips. And we wanna train this because it's limiting our exposure, particularly in these close quarter fights. Getting these little bits of damage is much more important than getting just a full on beam. You're able to work the situation much better and stack things in your favor. So we're looking at just getting small amounts of damage very quickly. By peeking in and out at different spots, you're creating an action versus reaction effect, where as long as you're the one doing the action, you're going to be likely ahead of that person at least a half second, and that is plenty of time to put some damage on them and still get behind cover without taking that much yourself. To isolate and practice this skill, all you gotta do is go into the range and use those boxes that you've seen and just turn your dummies onto movement. Don't worry about the shooting back, that'll come next. And here we are at the next part. At this point, you've got a decent idea about your limitations of aim, being able to use your cover, and being able to peek in and out of that cover pretty effectively. I'm calling this section shields because I feel like that's the easiest way to quickly assess if you're doing this in-game. What we're really looking at is your ability to stay calm and process things, not get quite so overwhelmed. I see a lot of players get low on health in these closer quarter combats, and then they just push. And the question is why? If you're low on health, that's a stupid push. Do you have the time to pop a cell real quick? Maybe that's a better decision. So that's what we're gonna practice. Lucky for you, you don't have to just hop drop to practice this skill. You can go into the range. I really like this box here. The dummies stay in front of you and just turn the dummies onto some level of firing. Depending on your skill, change it up. Start doing some peeking drills and then just make sure to heal and kind of play with what is safe behind the box. Play with those edges and just start getting some familiarity of where am I actually safe? That way you're not so panicked in real game. All of these drills have been isolating different skills and that means that you typically have more time to do these different skills than you would in an actual game. So for this fifth step, we're gonna compile them all together. Now, one way you could do this is mixtape. Pretty low stakes if you just absolutely bomb, but there's a lot more variables and you don't control as much. So it might be hard to measure if you're making progress. A better way to measure it is if you jump into the range again and you turn your dummies onto full combat. But here's the thing, don't just run around the range, you know, pretending that it's all one fight. No, put yourself in a bad spot and work your way out of that bad spot. Use these ideas of, you know, peaking to take the smallest amount of damage, using your clutter to increase the amount of cover you have, your excellent aim as always, and then using shields when you can, you know, back up, shield up, and then go. This will help you immensely in the rest of the game. 
Something this video hasn't really talked about is movement, and that's because you only really need to know how to get into a sprint from holstering your weapon. All those other skills will make you better, yes, but it's not going to make up for the fundamentals that we just talked about. If this video does help you break a plateau or gives you some direction, throw me a like or a comment and say what's your biggest difficulty. Those comments do matter. This whole video came from one comment about, hey, how do I fight in small spaces? And really, you got to follow these series of steps to get there. If you're still here, I appreciate you watching, guys. Subscribe if you haven't. Throw a like, all that good stuff. And we'll see you in the next video.